Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic. Positronic. I'm Barry P. Cook. I'm here to talk about the latest episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. It was called Children of the Comet. As it begins, the Enterprise is orbiting a pre-warp planet, the name of which, along with the name of the species that lives there, I couldn't catch without the subtitles on, to observe a particular comet for some reason. While this is happening, Uhura attends dinner at the captain's quarters and wears her dress uniform, which is yet another uniform variation that I don't understand the existence of because there are so many different uniform types, like what? Anyway, she's wearing it because Ortegas played a prank on her by making her think it was formal Well, everyone else is gonna be there in casual wear. <laughs> kind of funny, except for number one who wears her regular uniform. I don't know, anyway. Upon arriving at the dinner at the captain's quarters, which by the way is a huge space with a fireplace, which is entirely different than the captain's quarters on the Enterprise later in, the, I don't know, anyway. She inadvertently insults the blind Enar engineer who came aboard at the end of last episode. And Spock pranks her a bit over her having inadvertently insulted him, which I didn't think was a very Spock kind of thing, but okay. The Enar, by the way, are a subspecies of the Andorians, and we saw them in Enterprise. At the dinner, Pike tells an amusing story about f basically failing at being a security officer, and then asks Uhura where she sees herself in 10 years, and he almost chokes on the question because, of course, 10 years is about when he expects his accident to occur 10 years down the road. During her reply, Uhura discusses the fact that her family was killed in an accident, which, you know, tragic backstory. But moving on, after the party or the dinner, I should say, number one talks with Pike about changing his fate. While studying the comet though, Spock discovers that it's going to hit and destroy the planet, which wasn't expected, I guess. So the bridge crew comes up with a plan to blow it up before it can do that. But it seems that the comet is shielded, though the shield only appears in response to a threat in real time, which is a little convenient. But an away team is sent down to see if they can turn off the shield an away team which includes Uhura and Sam Kirk, when scans determine that there are artificial structures built by an intelligence. Before they can beam down, they're given an injection to protect them for a couple of hours from cosmic rays by Nurse Chapel, who continues to act like someone completely different from Nurse Chapel. <laughs> On the surface, the away team finds a giant egg type thing in a cave with what seems to be some kind of a language written on it and as they get closer to it, it lights up. Sam Kirk, who seems at this point to be a bit of a Tom Paris clone, touches it, even though Spock warns him that it's building up a ton of energy, and it tosses him back and stops his heart. When they try to beam back up to the ship, they can't because the comet's shield re-engaged, possibly because they were read as a threat when he touched it, which of course blocks transportation as well as communications. So they defibrillate him on the spot, but they still need to get him back to the ship. On the surface of the planet, the indigenous species notices the comet and are fearful. At the suggestion of security chief Khan, the captain decides to blast the shields with high frequency phasers. Spock and Uhura talk about the situation and she makes, it, he, uh, she makes a joke about Nurse Chapel being his girlfriend, which he says isn't the case, which prompts Uhura to say that she's aware of that, but that Chapel was flirting with him, which is interesting because in the original series, it was kind of a thing that, that she had a thing for him. When the Enterprise hits the shields with phasers, a ship carrying people who call themselves the Shepherds show up and fire on the Enterprise. Upon talking with them over the gigantic, humongous view screen with a heads up display, it turns out that they are guardians of the comet, which is a sacred being to them. And they threaten that if the Enterprise interferes with it again, they'll destroy the Enterprise. The captain explains to them that it's going to destroy the planet and kill millions of people, as well as destroy the comet anyway. But they say that if that's the case, then it's preordained and must be allowed to occur. It also turns out that the Shepherds are aware that the away team is on the comet 
and they again threaten to destroy the Enterprise if they try to rescue them. Back on the surface of the comet, Spock notices that the walls of the cave seem to light up when Uhura nervously hums. This causes the comet to send out a signal for the structures on the comet that the Enterprise picks up, and the signal is a replication of the Kenyan song that Uhura was humming. And at that reveal, I have to say, I got chills. I really did. Uhura and Spock figure out how to structure a singing voice in such a way, or their singing voices, I should say, in such a way that it activates the controls of the egg, which opens up when they sing. By singing in a particular way, Uhura gets the egg to make the shields go down, and they beam up the away team, which upsets the shepherds who attack. It was a pretty cool battle sequence here, which results in a brief stay of execution for the Enterprise when things reach kind of a stalemate, at which point Spock suggests that they not move the comet, but figure out a way to get the comet to move itself so that they don't anger the shepherds, and the security chief flies the ship in a crazy evasive pattern when the a pursuit of them resumes in order to outrun the shepherds and get it in front of the comet, between the comet and the planet, while taking several strikes to the shields which, uh, were, which lit up when they were hit, which is pretty cool. After positioning the ship in front of the comet, Pike pretends to be a wounded animal, as it were, shutting down most of the ship's systems so that they appear to be in bad shape so that the shepherds will have no choice but to rescue them quote unquote, so that they don't get smashed by the comet and take it out when their warp core goes up. And while this is occurring, Spock, who had taken a shuttle away from the ship, comes out of hiding up from up against the, uh, like an asteroid and radiates heat outwardly from the shuttle's shields, I guess, or from the hull as he glides around the surface of the comet, which causes it to sort of break up a little bit and to move to a safe trajectory for the planet, which causes Spock to chuckle and utter a line of dialogue that's now been said three times in the episode, which is sometimes things go so badly that you just have to laugh. Pike said it during his anecdote and Uhura said it when things seem to go sideways on the surface of the comet when they were there and then Spock says it. I thought the laugh was interesting because we know at this stage he's not uber Spock and he does occasionally do weird emotional things, so it was fine. As a result of all this action with the comet, it causes the comet to, I guess, spew off some water vapor, which hits the planet's atmosphere, turning it from a desert planet into a planet capable of growing life. Uh, you know, it turns it into like a, a a more of a, a wet planet that can grow things as opposed to a completely arid desert scape. None the wiser, the shepherds think this happened because the comet is awesome <laughs> and knows what it's doing. And Pike plays along, at which point the shepherds move off without any further attack as it begins to rain on the planet. And once again, I have chills and uh, I, at this moment, find myself have a little, having a little trouble seeing. Uhura manages to interpret the signal that had been recorded earlier from the comet and learns that the comet seems to have known that everything that happened was going to happen. So either the comet or the structure or the structures put there by a spacefaring species other than the shepherds is apparently sentient, or something very similar to it. Spock then tells Uhura that Starfleet would be fortunate to have her if she decides to stay, because apparently at this point in her career, she's questioning whether she actually is meant for Starfleet. In his quarters, Pike has a conversation with number one in which she again encourages him to try to find a way to avoid his fate, echoing sentiments that have been expressed a couple of different times by different characters during last, week episode, last week's episode and during this one about how his fate isn't necessarily inescapable, which is making me a little nervous that they're gonna pull some kind of stunt where you know he doesn't end up in the chair, which I, I really hope they don't do, we'll have to see. You know, in the end, I wouldn't be surprised if he just says, no, this wasn't fate, I chose it. 
because I knew it, it, you know, the accident was going to happen. So I think that would be a cool way to resolve the whole question of is your fate predetermined is, is your life not your own? Do you have control? I think that'd be a great way to sort of resolve that whole philosophical question without altering, you know, the fact that he ends up in the chair, but we'll have to see. He then pulls up the files of the people that are going to end up in Starfleet and be saved by him when the accident that gives him his injury occurs. And that's where the episode ends. And I have to say that this episode was excellent. Excellent. The story was a 10. A 10. Flat out. The story was perfect Star Trek. Perfect Star Trek. There were a couple of tiny nitpicky things that I mentioned early in this review that I would like to have, you know, been different. But other than that, this was a perfect episode of Star Trek. Anson Mount continues to hit it out of the park as a Starfleet captain. Ethan Peck is doing a good job of living up to the role, it seems to me. The actress that plays Uhura is delightful. Ortegas is pretty cool. And I'm starting to see Security Chief Khan as a character similar to Worf in temperament and demeanor. And there's nothing wrong with that. The crew banter was exactly what it should have been. The aliens that they introduced were exotic, different, new. The space sequences were fantastic. I, I'm just floored at how good this was. What's killing me is that this episode, beyond a shadow of a doubt, more so than last week's, demonstrates that the people doing Star Trek are perfectly capable of doing fantastic live action episodic Star Trek. And I'm forced to wonder why they didn't realize that they should have used this formula on Discovery and Picard. Like, what were they thinking? If this show can replicate the excellence of this episode going forward or even come close to it, then along with the people making Lower Decks and Prodigy, they will have tipped the balance and have made current Star Trek on the whole worthy of the name on aggregate with three out of five shows being pretty darn good. And nobody is crossing their fingers harder than me that they will actually be able to do that. The funny thing, is that when we, you know, those of us who don't like Discovery first started complaining about Discovery, the people who like it insisted that it, that it, sh it couldn't and shouldn't be episodic because episodic is old fashioned and doesn't work and it's not what modern audiences want, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm guessing they all love this show. So they can shut the hell up. <laughs> Well, I don't want them to shut up completely because I would love for them to say, you were right. Episodic is better. But we'll see if they have the honor to do so <laughs> soon enough. But again, I think this episode was excellent. And there are serialized elements. The whole thing with Pike looms somewhat significantly in each episode, but it's not overdone. It's not the focus. It's the B plot, which it should be. The other B plot in this episode was Uhura. And I suspect, you know, we're going to see her story unfold going forward as well. But there's nothing wrong with that. They did it on Next Gen. They did it on Voyager. They did it on Deep Space Nine, you know, where each of the characters would get story time, uh, screen time. So that's cool. We also got Uhura's log, her personal log or her, her duty log, one of the two, as the opening log of the episode. And I thought that was cool. So, yeah. I have nit 
nitpicky complaints with this episode, but other than that, it blew me away. I thought it was fantastic, and I am very much looking forward to next week's episode. Until then, I thank you for watching. I'd love it if you gave it a like. I'd love it even more if you made a comment and we could talk back and forth about the episode. That would be very cool. But I'm going to take off, and as always, I wish you peace and long life.